I'm going to be a huge uh, fucking loser here for a second, but uh -huh. I'm going to read a, a, a passage from a Foucault book because yeah, yeah, book it made me it made me think of this. Um, yeah. So this is Foucault writing about um, like public torture and execution, which was a huge component of, you know, the justice system before the um, 1800s. So he goes, um, the fact that the crime and the punishment were related and bound up in the form of atrocity was not the result of some obscurely accepted law of retaliation. It was the effect in the rights of punishment of a certain mechanism of power of a power that not only did not hesitate to exert itself directly on bodies, but was exalted and strengthened by its visible manifestations, of a power that asserted itself as an armed power, whose functions of maintaining order were not entirely unconnected with the functions of war, of a power that presented rules and obligations as personal bonds, a breach of which constituted an offense and called for vengeance, of a power for which disobedience was an act of hostility, the first sign of rebellion, which is not in principle different from civil war of a power that had to demonstrate not why it enforced its laws, but who were its enemies and what unleashing of force threatened them of a power, which in the absence of continual supervision sought a renewal of its effect in the spectacle of its individual manifestations of a power that was recharged in the ritual display of its reality as quote, superpower unquote. I quote it just because R Riley Gale read this shit. Like he, I think yeah. he, he has a, a song earlier in their career that's about discipline and punish or is influenced yeah. by it. But like the, I hear that all that passage is talking about the way that the state made itself know it's made its omnipotence known with these acts of brutality. That's yeah. like the attitude that I'm hearing in from the point of view of this executioner. Yeah. That's what's so fucking crazy about it. I mean, to think about it that way, like, imagine it, it, what what's so interesting about it. It's it's what what's that writing called? He's writing from a, from a third perspective, or what do they call that? You mean like uh, he's writing f like from someone someone else's perspective, or yeah, he's writing from someone else's right. perspective, the, uh, third person, or. Well, this isn't third person. This is first person, I guess. It's first yeah, person, first from, person the, but, right, from the point of view yeah. of the executioner. Yeah, which is just so like, it's so, I don't know, it's just so like existential. Like, yeah, just, well, you think about the, the position of an executioner, this guy's, I mean, living a pretty miserable life, right? Like, yeah. I got to wear a mask, you know, cover his face all the time for whatever fucking reason and just yeah. spends his life like, <laughs> tearing people apart and like you know cutting people's arms off and yeah. you know like cranking a wheel and shit all yeah. for the just just to i don't know show how powerful the king is it's just like weird grim existence but yeah. it's it's like that the executioner is the state he is the king in that yeah. instance right because it's like th because if if you're following the rules of such a society you're thinking i'm gonna i'm doing this because i don't want the executioner to come for me you know, yeah. so you both have this tremendous power, but also this tremendous powerlessness in well, the, as this figure, right? Yeah, there, there's kind of a, there becomes this inact, inactive um, culpability that you both have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in that, like, it, somehow you're both complicit. Yeah. The, uh, so know. the executioner and the, and the victim or who, who's complicit? Well, complicit in the sense of like, if you're kind of thinking about what Foucault is saying and like that kind of postmodern thinking is that yeah. like you have a complicit nature by being part of the of a system that yeah. of the system. Yes. Yeah, for sure. You know, like I often think about that as like, you know, not, not to stray away too far from it, but I think about this as like uh, as an American, like, you know, like I'm I'm a first generation American, but you uh, it's often that you, you you end up thinking to yourself, "Wow, uh, we have such a comp we're complicit in we're complicit without knowing that we're complicit by being part of this system." Bro, you know? totally, and I mean, and obviously the the arc of discipline and punish is about how uh, uh, you know the justice system transformed yeah. from the executioner model, where uh, the violence of the state is public and and a spectacle to be witnessed and, oh, and celebrated well, and then and then it went to no actually the uh, violence of the state happens behind closed doors under the guise of reform 
Uh, yeah, and, under and, the and, and, report, right? right, and like and like the average person doesn't actually it doesn't see what's going on. Well, what's so funny? It's like where you kind of think about it in terms of like what we see is the spectacle, but you know we see the spectacle or, or we hear of the spectacle of it, right? Of like, oh, somebody's being executed, and that's somehow right. news. Like uh -huh. for example, this is so interesting that we're talking about this song. So just yesterday, I saw on the news there's a man. North Carolina is having their first execution in 10 years. Oh, fuck. And, and they gave this man the option to pick between an electric chair and a firing squad. Wow. That's the worst, the worst would you rather of all fucking time. What, worse, and he ended up picking the firing squad. And what's so, what's so interesting is to think about like what we're talking about now and, and sort of like, and what you said is the state and under the guise of reform, right? right? Or the or the the idea is to this is re, this is to reform or whatever. Yeah. It's like what we end up seeing is the spectacle of it. The yeah. spectacle that like I'm reading it on the internet and I'm going, wow, this guy has to pick. Right. Like, yeah. But behind closed doors is the powers that be that organized all this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's like sure. in a real way, it's like even though they're not public executions anymore, it's like it's public to know these kind of spectacle things. And it's almost like, it, it, it's funny to that ref, that the idea of this kind of stuff seems both punishment and also a warning to others. Yeah, uh-huh. You know, and there's something sick about that because none, none of those two things have to do with re reform. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? To warn others, it's not reform. It's it, it, it's kind of cautionary or it's, right. you know, it's letting you know. It's like, and yeah, it's, it's insane to me. Yeah, so this song, and I think this is what's cool about this song is I think the the lyrics do make you think about the contemporary state of criminal justice and the violence of the state through a look into like this past character, this past way of doing things. And I think it makes you think about is what we're doing now so different, right? Yeah. Especially the line, he carries cold hard steel masked with the taste of medicine. That's for that, that to me speaks to the state violence um, yeah. under the guise of reform, right? Yeah. It's like, we're going to, you know, put you in a, in a cell and we're going to put you in solitary confinement for, you know, uh, uh, like seven years because that's going to somehow turn you into like a better person. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah, it's uh, you know, that's the thing is like it's an intellectually provocative song. It has nuance, it has substance. But if you don't want to think about any of that shit, you fucking don't have to at all, and you can just be yeah. like, "Swing of the axe," and that's it. Totally yeah. works on a level too, which yeah. I love. Yeah, there, there's a great. Before we move on, it, there's a great live video of of uh, Power Trip live in Singapore, and uh -huh. you know, everyone's going like bananas. But it's really funny to watch this song. That, I mean, they love it, obviously, but it's like yeah. Singapore is a place where like, <laughs> you know, drug charges carry death sentences, and chewing gum is illegal. Like watching watching a bunch of Singaporeans like living in that society, which I'm sure is you know fine to live in, but yeah, it, like Singapore seems to be a very well-known example of like an incredibly um uh what's the word an incredibly active like police presence right yeah like, well what's so funny about that it's kind of the irony of it i mean i remember growing up in the 90s and there was a big story at the time in the 90s where this fucking american kid got caned over there for right he, yes he was yeah. caught tagging right he, he was caught tagging uh-huh and it was just like it's just like it, it's it's so funny to like that's kind of the beautiful thing about music. It's like, especially like Power Trip. I mean, you know, I, I, not to underestimate his their Singaporean fan base or whatever, but yeah. like, I mean, how many of them, not just them, but their fans in general all over the world are like, wow, uh, Riley's talking, to, Riley's referencing post, a postmodern yeah. thinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Probably not that many, but you know, it's yeah. like, I do, I do feel like there must be some sense in which they're like, yeah, like this song is from the point of view of this, they're not probably not phrasing in these exact words, but like, this is from the point of view of like state power and yeah. the violence it can inflict on you. And like, you know, living in a place where, I mean, you know, America's like this, you, you, we're all obviously incredibly uncomfortably aware 
of yeah. what state power can do to people and you know what what, what it can take away right like yeah um so yeah just anywhere where th this is a this is an element of society this is like a really cathartic song in a perverse yeah. way because it's from the again from the point of view of that of that oppressive power yeah it is funny how cathartic it is yeah yeah um i also just want one last thing is i think i s nearly all of these songs are they are um in second person meaning like everything is you they're they're it's yes, like addressing right. it's addressing somebody but the point of view changes sometimes it's a a oppressed person addressing another yeah. oppressed person which yeah. uh, i think might be firing squad sometimes it's an oppressed person addressing the power sometimes it's the power addressing the opp oppressed person but it's always a form of direct address um and and i think that really that that really adds to the to the intimate quality of this and the absolutely yeah um any any last um, thoughts about executioner's tax other than that shit fucking slaps no nah. it absolutely does yeah most importantly it slaps the hardest of any yeah. song i've i've heard in the last 10 years yeah Insane. let's uh let's listen to firing squad